All right, guys. I had some uh, request to kind of walk through my trailer and explain what I got going on here. So, uh, first off, it is a jet ski trailer, single jet ski trailer. I welded um, the cage basically on it. It has four verticals and then my rod box over here on the side it's got some uh, pieces going out to the side to hold it up it is all the trailer itself is made of one by three uh, rectangle tubing and i just went to a metal shop and or a metal supply store and i bought oh sorry i bought some more one by three to make it match and i built the frame to make it look pretty factory-ish looking so those of you who have been following me for a while know that I originally built this to put my kayak on and then put my wife's kayak on top of it. Um, recently, which you can't really see it, but right there in the bag is my wife's paddle board. Um, so I don't really have to do that anymore, nothing else. I just strapped that bag on top of uh, my gear here and we just head out um, <clears throat> or just put it in the back of the Jeep or the truck. Uh, but that's the concept. I have my spare tire on the front um, and I'm gonna try to go from front to back Let's, we're gonna talk trailer first and then we'll look at the rest um, on my trailer I added these feet these stabilizers there's a video back I'll try to link it below of me installing those put one on the front and also yeah apologies some of this is just a a rabbit mess. I have two on the back as you can see one on each side um, and what that's for is this rooftop tent I can put out the three legs and disconnect it from the uh, Jeep and um, be able to fold the, two, the rooftop tent out and camp if I need to. Um, I, have, I have camped in the rooftop tent when it was on top of the Jeep which is out there but I have yet to camp in it on top of this, so that's still in trial mode and a little hot right now to deal with. Um, I see a lot of people questioning the smaller tires. Uh, these are like 12 inch rims. Um, uh, God, what is that? Maybe 14 inch overall tires, 15. I doubt, I doubt even that big. They're the smaller like boat trailer tires. This thing has made it um, quite a few hundred miles uh, I pulled it just not even counting just the trips that I've made with it from like Richmond Sugarland area to Galveston but and when I lived in Mississippi down to the coast but I actually hauled this thing to Texas um, so straight line running which I did you know before I left I greased the axles you know I'm pretty meticulous about doing the maintenance um, but grease the axles up nice, re-grease re the bearings um, before I left. But um, I don't back this into the water. So uh, since I have made this setup out of it, it hasn't really been backed into the water, but maybe one time. I tried it once and decided that just wasn't, wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, so yeah, two inch ball. Um, I kept the tongue the length to where when it's connected to my Jeep, my Jeep rear door can swing open uh, without hitting the kayak. I actually left, or uh, sorry, I welded uh, that stop for the front of the kayak to make sure that I stopped it in the same place every time. Um, it's pretty simple, pull it up, butt it up against that. I throw two cinch straps across it and uh, it's there. Uh, I actually built it slightly too narrow and if you see right here I've got these pads on the inside of the bars so it's pretty snug so when you pull it up uh, especially on the back bar you know this thing's what 35 36 inches wide in that spot 34 35 something like that um, so it's like it just is that inside to inside so it's a really snug fit so by the time I um, butt it up here those two other points holding it and then I throw two cinch straps over um, and in a position that um, I mean they literally the straps would have to break they're not going to come loose 
I actually use <clears throat> on the back strap at least. I use these straps here and I'll try to figure out what the brand of these are, but uh, yeah, they got the clips. So, I mean, aside from literally breaking, uh, they're not gonna come off, so uh, I'll fold my seat down. I have a rubber strap that I connect here. It goes over my seat to the other handle. That kind of gives it a, a hold down effect. And then I run this strap across the back side of the seat I run this strap across the front. This thing's not going anywhere. Uh, it's, I've driven quite a few miles with it just like this or, or holding it down just this way. I used to use ratchet straps, but to be honest, the cinch straps work just fine and it's just a lot less to deal with. All right, so trailer, um, stabilizers, why I did that. Um, I welded these places to hang my, uh, bungees and things from uh, on the side Let's see if you can see underneath you'll see this frame I've actually got one two there's technically three crossovers for up top and I had to do that because the uh, rooftop tent was an afterthought and I built it for the Jeep and I didn't build it long enough as it was folded up to make it all the way across so I just added that upper frame um, to make it work and it made it a lot more rigid the lights don't really like where they are at the moment, but they're going to stay because honestly, I don't have time to, they're just not on the priority list. They work. Um, I got to put some more zip ties and clean this up. I had to pull this apart and pull it out of my tubing. Uh, plan is to run these down, back down low, but I will say driving, it gets a lot of attention being up high like that. They're LED as well. so. I don't know, may just clean the wires up, but that's where they are for now. Um, let me see, okay, so talked about the trailer, the tires, the tongue length uh, for the Jeep, um, the frame holding the rooftop tent. When the rooftop tent isn't up there, I actually use this cargo box um, to hold more gear, more stuff. So if I wasn't camping, I would probably swap those out. Um, and basically everything I need would be in my cargo box and it's just a matter of hooking to the Jeep and going. But because that is the heavier item, leave it on the trailer. Uh, it's got a you know waterproof cover on it. Yakima box. That's, um, this is a game changer for me. Uh, the Yakima box is what allows me to not have the cargo carrier on all the time. Why is that? Because not only does it hold my rods, it can hold my paddle. It's holding my anchor pole if I decide to go anchor pole rather than um, uh, actual weight anchor. It holds my, vis my visi pole. And then what, depending on the type of fishing that I plan on doing for that day or whatever trip I'm making, I can put a small tackle box in the end. So if I'm just going, like I got my bass stuff on there right now. Kind of just left it on there to roll with it. Um, even my paddle, my paddle's broken down and fits in here, rides pretty snug. And I can put, you know, a few other items here and there inside there. Um, rod tips stay safe, out of the way. You know, they're pretty much taken care of. I was just filling out. I'm just putting these back so you can see the idea. Uh, rubber straps, hold it down. Yeah, rubber strap here, rubber strap in the middle, rubber strap on the end. This thing's pretty sturdy. Um, this, it locks, I'm sorry. It locks and it's really secure. It's got a lock. Let me show you. There's a lock on each side that, let me see if I can activate it, yeah, there we go. There's a lock on each side, like that. Pretty sturdy, now, obviously, if a, uh, if a thief wanted in, a thief's probably gonna get in. Like, they can break anything if they wanna be that stupid. But, uh, yeah, you get the idea. But honestly, take the rooftop pin off, put the cargo box up top, 
that's the point where I've got like everything I need, especially winter time. I've got boots, and, you know, just cold weather gear. Um, I can also carry like my, my bait bucket and things like that. Um, the kayak rolls pretty much just as you see it. Um, I always keep my strap up front, my rope up front, sorry. Uh, I don't want to take those off, but I've got a um, the, the tub. It's a Bonafide 127, if you don't know where it is. I got the tub in there, and I could also, I've got in inside storage if I wanted to, but honestly, I'm trying to get away from that, but it is what it is. I've got the uh, Hummingbird, um, I think it's the five, Helix 5, right, I think. Yep, Helix 5 on it. Uh, inside here, I've kept it very um, simple. I got the battery inside. Uh, I'm not gonna take it out, but if you know anything about the Bonafide, I've got it totally, totally free, right? Everything is confined inside, and uh, it's just a grab and go. Open that up. Put the battery in, flip the switch on. I actually have some lights for in-hole lights um, when I'm night fishing. Not that I do that a lot, but at least it gives me something. Um, uh, I've got a cleat. Uh, I don't use it much, but it does get used. It's, uh, it's a rare occasion, but uh, sometimes I'll take that rope and just tie it off. And sometimes I'll take the end of that rope and loop it to that around a pole or something. It just depends. I've got this. I don't even remember, honestly, what is this? Um, yak Attack? Yeah, Yak Attack. Uh, yak Attack rod holder. It's been great. Uh, it's one of those that I can just lift and turn, but it won't come off um, unless I want it to. And uh, that's what I use for basically, um, you know, when I'm fishing and hook something, I bring it in, I reach up, I can set my rod in it and give me a moment to get unhooked. Uh, I've got a cup holder right here. Uh, one of the very few things, I was going to disconnect it, but it just kind of hangs there, gives me a place. I actually don't use this a whole lot, but uh, mainly because I misplaced it until recently. But um, let's see, anchor trolley. We've got the anchor trolley going from front to back. Uh, almost full length there again I don't really use it very much but I'm fixing to begin to uh, I've been using my anchor off the back but I'm thinking of going with a different setup uh, I got an anchor wizard on these uh, on these spots right here on the perch pads and then I added the track here on the other bent on the other side added the anchor wizard there I run back comes through this homemade stainless steel pad eye and I either um, let's see let me show you how that works it'll come back here and give you an idea how that works so side seat and that's basically it stages itself like that and it's uh it's really 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 stable uh, sorry it's pretty stable and as you can see i mean it's pretty pretty solid and then when i want to deploy it i do that now uh this serves two purposes when i'm not using that anchor and i'm using the anchor pole this manual anchor pole i, I actually run this rope through this pulley right here anchor pole goes through here so if I'm in um, seven foot or less that is definitely what I will use for my anchor but if I'm anywhere near over seven foot eight foot I use the uh, weight anchor um, this is my cart I actually modified it I put some uh, these uh, horizontal poles on top of it. They used to be one that just folded up pretty nice and neat and would fit inside the kayak but um, it didn't work with the Bonafide very well. Added those two horizontal poles to fit in the, the um, underneath the hull 
and now it works amazing. Uh, the only downside is it just doesn't fold up as easy. Um, so I just keep it in the back like this. I don't necessarily run a, uh, a pack like other people do, so it doesn't really affect me a whole, whole lot. Um, I got the rail blazer mount right there. I showed you my, uh, my Visi pole, my rail blazer Visi pole in there. I had that thing for three years and it's still running on the same batteries and it's still just as bright as the first day I ever used it. <clears throat> um, I just actually started running um, in the high position on the Bonafide. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Bonafide. I've been running in the low position, um, but I've just gotten more comfortable in the kayak. Okay. Got the drawer underneath. I've actually been using it more for holding my tackle as I go. I used to just set it in between my legs there, but uh, with the seat in the high position, it's just easier. Um, there's a one inch ball mount here, and there's one on the other side. Let me show you that. I'll have to come over here. Got one here just to stage this, keep it out of the way. When I'm traveling, I just kind of fold it down put that on it I got a um, I'm sorry inch and a half ball mount that's what that is and the uh, finder the finder there has uh, a one inch mount as well is what holds it up um, so I can move my finder there if I wanted to get it super close uh, but honestly right there is uh, pretty awesome I actually like it right where it sits it's perfect it's uh, close enough I can reach it make adjustments and it's close enough I can see it. Inch and a half here for this ball mount and this can be moved. Sometimes I'll put it up here where the cleat is. Uh, the end of it has a one inch ball mount and that's what holds my GoPro. When I'm fishing and filming, I don't necessarily like putting the GoPro on my body. It's kind of annoying to me, uh, but I do at times, but that's what I use mainly. What else? Um, I, let's see, lots of projects going on. I have my main tackle box right there, but for the most part, the way I roll is I have these small tackle bags. Holds three of the, uh, three of the mini. I can't remember what it's called. Here's another one, holds three. Then I've got this uh, H2O brand. Let's see. And I got this one. Um, I actually took that's my that's my main gear carry. So I'll I'll just swap between the bags. Have um, you know some of my freshwater gear is in one of these. Um, I think uh, that one. This is kind of like panfish, small fish. Uh, the one that's over here, I believe, is my bass rig. It's got my jigs in it, and this is my saltwater rig. Um, so. That has most of my jigs and terminal tackle things and I'll carry some extra stuff and uh, pliers and other extra stuff in the in the bag but I make sure it can all fit in one of these. Uh, if I open this up you can see I've got my fish grips and stuff inside there. So it's pretty much everything I need. And then let's see what else am I missing? So, if you don't know, this is a floating um, net. <clears throat> this is a floating net from Academy. This is what I use most of the time. And I literally, because I don't have a, a pack behind me, I usually, when I'm fishing, will literally just do that and connect it to one of my leashes and uh, where it can't go far. Put it right behind the seat and uh, I can actually get to it. It works really well. And if the fish are like on fire, I might even do this, stage it right in front of me. 
So from a seat position, get the idea. But yeah, man, super simple setup. Um, I don't know what else to talk about. That's pretty much everything you could possibly want. In a, uh, in a rig. Look like this. And when I'm off in places to where I'm worried about it, I will run a cable, a bike cable, through the seat frame, through the kayak scupper, over the frame. There's no deck underneath here. So I literally will uh, will go here, through that scupper, go down. Sometimes I'll go just around this side frame, side frame here. Uh, but regardless, I'll make the loop right here. That means they will not be able to pull it off or pull it forward. They would have to cut the cable to even begin to, and that would take them a minute. So, yeah, that was Yak Gadget, if I didn't mention it. Yak Gadget, um, it's a rope and pulley style anchor pole, shallow anchor pole. Uh, I don't know, I think that's it. So, ah. Uh, Hope this helps. Uh, I know just I've had, I just had a few questions here and there from people, and um, I hadn't did an update on my trailer lately. So when it cools off, I will definitely uh, I'm going to try to go down to like Galveston Island State Park and look at that. Get that off in the distance. I get to see that all the time. All right, that wraps it up. Probably a long video. Yep, 22 minutes. Uh, of total video of me walking that through so I will do my best to limit this down to as much as I can I probably said um a thousand times so guys appreciate it um, if you saw the last video that I made uh, it's only a few minutes I got some life uh, life things happening and um, so I don't know how much I'll be sharing but um, yeah man golly but definitely uh, be praying for us. Appreciate you. Later.